Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone again. I hope everyone is doing good. As we all know, we are going to be celebrating Father's Day tomorrow. And my topic for today's sermon will also be about what the Bible has to say about fathers and what fatherhood means for families and society in general. So to start off, I'm going to share a story about a man named Tom who lived in England during the 1700s. Tom worked as a very humble and hardworking blacksmith. So his work was very hard and tiresome. And he did his best to raise his son, who was named Benny, to teach him to be a hardworking person, to teach him the, dif the difference between right and wrong. Unfortunately, Benny started spending time with the wrong types of people who like to party and get drunk and be lazy. And even though his father told him, Benny, don't hang out with them. Follow my advice, you know, work in my shop so you can have a better future. Benny didn't listen to him and kept on spending time with bad apples, as you might say. One day, Benny was out with his friends very late into the night, drinking, partying again. And as he was making his way home, he decided he would take a shortcut through his father's workshop because it was closer going through the workshop. And he was carrying a lantern with him because there was no electricity during this time. And as you know, the lantern has a small flame inside it which causes the light. And because he was drunk, he accidentally dropped the lantern inside of the shop. Now, can you imagine what fire would cause inside of a blacksmith's workshop? Immediately, the entire shop caught fire, and he was trapped inside. Word quickly spread throughout the town that there was a fire in the blacksmith's shop. And eventually, Tom, the father, heard what was going on. He immediately ran towards his shop because he was afraid for his son. And when he got there, the people were telling him, you can't save your son, it's too late. If you go inside, you will risk your life as well. What do you think Tom, the father, did? Did he wait for other help to come? No, he immediately dove into the flames to try to save his son. When he found him there, lying, burning up, breathing in the smoke, he carried him on his shoulders out of the shop and brought him to safety. But in doing so, he also injured himself because of burns and breathing in all of the smoke. Now why would a father whose son had willfully disobeyed him so many times risk his own life to save his child? Because of his unconditional love as a father for his son. It didn't matter if his son had disobeyed him. So throughout today's presentation, we'll be looking at this unconditional love that a father has for his children and also what the Bible has to say about fatherhood. <clears throat> In Proverbs 20 verse 7, we see this verse which says, The righteous man walks in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. Now how exactly are the children blessed through a father? We're going to start by looking at a lot of different research that's been done about fatherhood. So according to the United States Department of Justice, there are some very interesting stats. 63% of youth suicides are caused from children who come from fatherless homes. 85% of children with behavioral disorders also come from fatherless homes. And finally, 71% of all high school dropouts are also from fatherless homes. So very clearly, when a father is present in his child's life, it can prevent a lot of these negative stats from occurring. There's more about this in the research which is called the importance of fathers in the healthy development of children. There's even more research about fathers and their effects on cognitive abilities of their children, which found that when fathers are involved in their children's lives, 
those children have a much higher academic success than children whose fathers are not involved. And this is actually regardless of the father's own education level, or even regardless of how rich the family is, or what their ethnic background is. The only thing that matters is whether or not the father is involved. There is also in a research from the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry, which found that when fathers are involved in the lives of their boys and their sons, those boys have fewer behavioral issues. And the same thing goes for girls. When fathers are involved in their daughters' lives, those girls have fewer instances of early sexual activity and teenage pregnancy. So both genders have a very strong impact on whether the fathers are involved in their lives. Next, there is research from the Economic Journal, published in 2020, which shows that there is a strong correlation between the father's presence and future financial stability. Children with involved fathers are more likely to attain economic success in adulthood. And another interesting stat is that Indian and Chinese families in the United States are often the highest earning cultures and families. They earn even more than white families often. What is the reason for this? One of the reasons is that these two cultures have a very strong emphasis on the family unit. They value parents and a nuclear family, which is very quickly falling apart in a lot of the other cultures. We mentioned the Roman Empire during the lesson study, and we all know that the Roman Empire was one of the greatest empires in the world. And there were many different factors that caused it to collapse eventually. But can you guess what one of the things was that caused the fall of the Roman Empire? So during the fall of the Roman Empire, the family structure had faltered. There were very high divorce rates, and more and more children in the Roman Empire were being raised without fathers. And we can actually see the exact same thing happening in the United States today. The US is supposed to be the greatest country in the world, right? We have a lot of freedom, we have economic opportunities. But what's happening to the families in the United States? There is very high divorce rate, just like in the Roman Empire. There is very high single motherhood, which means the parents are not involved in the children's lives. And very clearly, we can see the results of that. There are too many kids with behavioral issues. They go into criminal activity. They don't finish school. They don't get good jobs in adulthood just like the stats that we discussed earlier. So, very clearly there is very good research about how important the father is in his families, in his society. And next, we're gonna take a look at what the Bible has to say about fathers. According to Ephesians 6.4, it tells us fathers do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. What does this mean? It means that an ideal father is patient, kind, and committed to raising his children in the Lord's teachings. In Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, we read, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves, as a father the son in whom he delights. What do we learn from this? We learn that discipline, whether it comes from God or from our fathers, is an expression of love. Parenting is guidance and correction. It's not punishment. Fathers teach us right from wrong, just as God teaches us right from wrong. In Job 1.5, we read, When a period of fasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified, them meaning his children. Early in the morning, 
he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, sin thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Why did Job make sacrifices on behalf of his children? Why was he interceding? Because he cared for them. He was worried about their spiritual needs, not only for their physical needs. In Luke 15, we're all familiar with the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son's father shows the power of unconditional love. He welcomed his son back, regardless of what the son had done. What are some of the roles and responsibilities of fathers, according to the Bible? In Deuteronomy 6, 6-7, we read, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. We learn again that fathers are not merely providers of material needs. They are emotional anchors, spiritual mentors, protectors, and teachers, guiding their children through the challenges of life and onto the path of righteousness. None of us are perfect, we are all born into sin, and that includes our fathers and our mothers, and all of us. As humans, our fathers may falter and stumble, they might not always make the right decisions. Yet, even in their imperfections, they can reflect God's love and teachings. They can apologize, make amends, learn and grow, modeling for their children the grace of humility and strength in vulnerability. A perfect example of this is King David, who was maybe the greatest king of Israel, the man after God's own heart. Yet, even in his greatness, he was still a fallible human and an imperfect father. When he was, when he had committed sin in 2 Samuel 11 to 12, he was confronted by Nathan. How did King David react to being confronted about his sin? Did he shrug it off and think he is too great, he is above it all? No. He admitted his guilt and sought God's forgiveness. He wrote the 51st Psalm as a prayer of repentance. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So even though we have earthly fathers and mothers who are sinful and imperfect, we have a perfect father in heaven whose love for us is profound, eternal, and steadfast. Unlike our human fathers who are bound by the fallibility of human nature, our heavenly father's love and wisdom are unerring. In Matthew 7 verse 11 we read, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? God's love surpasses human understanding and limitations. This divine love led our Heavenly Father to give His only Son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Can any parent here imagine giving their child to die for anything. It's impossible to even comprehend that, right? Yet our Heavenly Father's love is so profound for us that He gave His only Son to die so that we might live. God's love is a promise of reconciliation and eternal life. It serves as our stronghold, our sanctuary, and our unwavering hope. So let us rest in the assurance that our Heavenly Father's perfect love is unfailing and everlasting. In conclusion, as we honor and appreciate our earthly fathers, let's remember the ultimate example of perfect fatherhood, which is God Himself. And despite their imperfections, the Father's role remains vital in our lives, in our families, in our society, and also in modeling our relationship with our perfect Heavenly Father. Thank you and God bless you all.